trigger guys need to be communicating, going, oh, yeah. call. We're going to do this. Three, two, one. Uh, Savi Island Wildlife Area and we're attempting to capture leg band and neck collar uh, cackling Canada geese uh, using uh, rocket nets. Percent, percent. Well a rocket net is a, uh, is a long net um, usually uh, about 60 feet long and 30 feet deep that is um, fired over birds. In this case, we're using bait to bait the birds in front of the nets, and then uh, using electric charge and uh, electricity. Electricity ignites charges in the rockets that uh, carry the net over the uh, over the feeding geese. And um, we're gonna age them off of their feather wear. Uh, take a look at their wing tips. These are more rounded. These are much more rounded wing tips. Um, and you can see how it looks more like a butter knife and not like the end of a steak knife. That's uh, indicative of, of an adult. Um, everything else, this bird is big for one. Structurally, it's huge. Um, this, is, this was not a bird born this year. Metal band with our, uh, all the contact information so that if anyone ever finds this band or this bird, they can call it in. And this is a unique, uh, this is a unique band. These auxiliary markers are for our project going on for the last two years. It's a three-year project I'm trying to uh, determine exactly what our, well, get a better estimate of the overall population size. We're uh, uh, attempting to better estimate the population of cackling Canada geese. And so by placing neck collars on them, that'll help us to estimate the number of, of birds and inform management within the flyway so we have a just a better idea of how many geese we have and that'll help us um, when we need to make management decisions. We're going for 05, adult female. Well over the last several years cackling geese and really the last couple decades cackling geese have have moved into Oregon. They switched their wintering grounds from California to Oregon and Washington specifically the Willamette Valley area and Salvia Island and then in, this, in the lower Columbia River and they as they've done that um, they've caused significant agricultural depredations to the farmers here. And, and as we go through management um, of these birds, um, some questions have come up about the actual true population. Anybody wants to look at a Judy? We got this for 90 yeah. bucks. Really? Yeah. Got this in that color well, This is a, uh, a total Pacific flyway effort. Um, we have um, uh, bands and collars that are under the um, Alaska Yukon Delta uh, refuge in Alaska, their banding permits, so all the bands and collars are theirs. We have uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife rocket net gear. We have uh, personnel from a Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife assisting here today. We have a number of personnel from the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. We've had personnel from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Region 1 office in Portland, as well as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Migratory Bird office in Portland. So we've got, and, and then a countless number of volunteers who've also been real helpful. So we've got a, a number of folks involved, and we've at sometimes had up to 20 folks in the field um, helping us out. So. so in this project, we've set aside about a week to uh, 10 days of time, and we have approximately 750 net collars that we're hoping to get deployed. This is, we're in the second year of uh, this three-year project and we marked geese in the summer of 2011 on their breeding grounds on the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta in Alaska as well as last summer in Alaska. Um, we haven't marked as many birds as we'd hoped and so that's why we've moved here to the wintering grounds. <laughs> Yeah, we don't want to let it 
So I'll smear it a little bit and I'll just hold it for about 30 seconds. Like that. Who has ninety?